Halleluja. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Please lift your hands to heaven and let's give God quality thanks for his faithfulness, for his love. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Lift your hands, lift your voices, and bless the maker of the heavens and the earth. Bless the maker of men. Someone blessing his name. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you for your mercies, for your faithfulness, for your goodness. The psalmist said, Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Jesus, we bless you. We honor you for the power of your word, for your mercy, for your grace. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Now ask him to give you an encounter tonight by his word. God is ever ready to transform our lives for as long as our hearts are open to receive. Is someone praying? Following online, following by way of television. Within the auditorium, cry for an encounter tonight. The Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receive it. That you show us mercy tonight by your spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Spirit of the living God, you were sent to us by Jesus to equip us, to mature us, even in the things of the Spirit. We gather week in and week out because we love you and then because we desire wisdom. The Bible calls you the spirit of wisdom. You are the one who can open up our understanding. Do so tonight in the name of Jesus. We declare that it is in your light that we see light. Oh, let the veil be taken from off our eyes. And Lord, I pray that as your word comes tonight, let it be a word of healing for someone. Let it be a word of deliverance for someone. Let it be a word of prophecy for someone. Let it be a word of restoration for someone. Let it be a word of encounter for someone. And to you be all the praise. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is important that we continue to sustain our passion for the house of God. One of the biblical indices that measure spiritual passion is your love and your passion for the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We have in our midst tonight um, a great man of God, Pastor Abel Luko, all the way from House on the Rock in Benway State, Makodi. God bless you and his dear wife. Thank you. Let's give them a big, big koinonia welcome. God bless you, sir. Please be seated, sir. Thank you very much. And um, I welcome everyone who is connecting with us and all who are here for the first time. This is Koinonia, and the God of heaven will do you good tonight. 
The name Koinonia is not just the name of a ministry. It's not the name of a service. It is a capture of everything to expect when you come before the Lord as far as this grace is concerned. Hallelujah. Koinonia means that you will experience fellowship with the Spirit in worship. Koinonia means that the Word of God will come to guide you and open up your eyes to see. Hallelujah. Koinonia also means that it is an experience that cultivates intimacy. Intimacy. A depth of relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then Koinonia is a place of empowerment. Hallelujah. To be empowered means to be granted access to the spiritual resources that it takes to advance. The spiritual resources that it takes to do that which has been mandated that you do as far as God's predeterminate counsel is concerned. Hallelujah. The Lord will do us good in Jesus' name. While I prayed for this meeting, the Lord began to reveal a few things and I just want to do justice to these speakings and then we'll get straight to the business of the night. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1 and verse 10. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Paul was speaking to them. If you read the preceding verses, he was saying, Add to your faith virtue, to your, your virtue, this and that and that. And then he says, Give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. Very instructive scripture. That means it is your responsibility to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to stop men from doubting the validity of your Christian experience. Hallelujah. It says, give diligence to these things so that you will make your calling and your election sure. That means it remains unsure in your eyes and in the eyes of people except and unless you give diligence. And then it says, in addition to giving diligence, if you do these things, there are some these things that you must do. Not if you hear these things, if you do these things, it gives you a guarantee that there is no going down for you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That means it is your responsibility as a believer in Christ and one who is part of the faith walk to continue to maintain a heart that is ever hungry and ever opened to learn all the things that you need to learn as far as walking in the experience of your victory and your liberty is concerned. Hallelujah. I have taught you again and again that the life of God that has been given to us is knowledge dependent. That means there is a requisite level of spiritual knowledge it takes to release the potential of the life of God that is within you. Just because you have the life of God does not mean, listen carefully, just because you have the life of God does not mean that your life will capture the multifaceted potentials that are locked up in that life. I can have a phone my phone can do a lot of things. This device is empowered to do so many things. Are we together? But it is possible that I can have this device and even though the manual connected to it looks like a notebook, for instance, and would tell you all kinds of things that it can do, I may never be able to access one-tenth of the potential of this device in my life. Now, I can see someone else holding the same device. In fact, even another device that is of a lesser quality. And yet, because the person has paid the price to understand how to maneuver that device. Are we together? One time, years ago, I can't remember where I was traveling to. I used to use a very small phone then. I liked it because of its convenience. And then it will go straight to the point. No, you know. I don't have time to ask all questions moving as if I'm traveling with a car. Straight to the point, if it's my notebook, I can access it. So I really liked all those small phones. And it didn't seem to be able to do much as far as whatever is concerned. And then I was traveling. I sat close to a Chinese man. 
and I was surprised. The man was using the exact same phone, only that it was in Chinese. And I saw what he was doing. And I said, ah, this is interesting. I mean, this is the same phone, the exact same phone. So I can have the same eternal life that you have, but the results that we command from that same life can be east and west apart. Sometimes when you pray, God will tell you, I gave my son already. My best is what I've given. What else can I give? I have given you my son. Any other thing I give you is only complimenting your receiving the life that has come. The greatest gift you will ever get has been given already. But whether you will walk in the fullness of that experience or not is another thing altogether. My assignment, you see, the assignment of a man of God is to walk in partnership with the Word of God and the Spirit of God to help you unravel the various resources that are available for you through knowledge, through knowledge, through knowledge, not through superstition, through knowledge. It will always be by his light that we rise. It will always be by knowledge that we excel. Africa is a place of a deep spirituality, but it's also a place of extreme superstition. We have all kinds of superstitious ideas as to how God operates and as to how the kingdom operates. There is no magic with God. It is the protocol. Once you understand knowledge and you are able to engage it, believe me, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to impede your life and your destiny when you have high level spiritual illumination are we learning praise the name of the lord so it's important that our hearts be opened and it's important that we pant after knowledge i would always give this illustration that if we switch off all the lights in this beautiful auditorium um and you have to put on the light in your phone it is light but not light enough to swallow the darkness that is in this room is that true so it is light enough to let us know you are there but it cannot give us any other detail about you but when you put on this light it will swallow the darkness in an instance john 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah so the bible says to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure i want to pray a special prayer before we get to the teaching tonight while i was praying for this meeting um i saw a word three times it came to my vision and i knew that the lord wanted me to bring this word and then to use that word to bring liberty for someone i saw the word limitation and i just shrugged it off i kept praying and then i saw it the second time limitation and the third time i saw it limitation when god begins to emphasize something like that he's telling you that someone is on his way to church already and this is the embargo that the devil has placed over his life over his destiny maybe someone has come here for the first time asking questions and saying lord is this how my life will continue to be i love you but it looks like something is sitting upon my destiny to limit means to stop people from seeing the fullness of a thing. To limit means to reduce the potential of that thing. It may not mean to stop it. There's a difference between limitation and stagnation. Stagnation means you are in one place. Limitation means you are not moving fast enough. And if you don't move fast enough with respect to time, there are some things that will not happen. Listen, please, I want you to pay attention. This is the house of God and when God speaks like this it is because someone's destiny has been crawling and you need to experience the grace of God whether you are outside whether you are inside listen when a word comes and it is for you don't just assume no there, there is an attitude that you used to receive the word with limitations I'm going to pray for you right now we'll just take 10 minutes from my preaching time and let me just deal with these issues once and for all over our lives for as long as we are alive let me tell you 
and this anointing God has given us, that which represents limitation in your life, bar, it, we must crush it to its knees. I'm about to pray now, and I want you to please bring those people under the anointing now, that the power of God comes upon. In the name of Jesus, every family, every individual, every destiny that has been tied down by altars of limitation, so that you will not move forward maybe you are a mother maybe you are a father maybe you are a man of god maybe you are a businessman maybe you are coming here for the first time watching online and it looks like there are altars that have vowed that you will not move forward i stand by this mantle i have been anointed by god to declare your liberty right now may the power of god come upon you be delivered now but now, altars of limitation, you come under arrest. This moment, altars of limitation, you come under arrest. This moment, altars of limitation, you come under arrest. This moment, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, please hear me. Some of you are standing not only for yourself. I want to pray for families here. Whole families that have been tied down. It looks like every altar sitting on the kadikata, sitting on the glory of any family. If I be sent by God, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. May fire fall upon that altar now. May fire fall upon that altar. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to declare. I declare my release. Every limitation, no matter how long, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant. Is someone praying? Those following online, I release that anointing upon you from America to Europe to Nigeria, parts of Africa. I declare, may the anointing of the Spirit touch you right in your room, in your office, right now. I set you free. Yokes of limitation, be delivered now. Every chain that has tied your hand and tied your feet. Hold on, please. Listen, we are still praying. In Acts chapter 12, watch this now. When Peter was in the prison, they tied two parts of his body. Number one, his hands. That's a symbol of your productivity. Number two, your feet. That is the symbol of your advancement. They didn't tie his mouth. They didn't tie his eyes. But they tied his hand and his feet. And the Bible says they bound him. That means to bind a man. It is not every part of him you need to tie. If you can tie his productivity and tie the basis for his advancement, that man is bound. Let me release someone by the anointing of the Spirit. I declare your hands spiritually. My God, fire is coming on people's hands now. These hands that have not been released. Maybe your father's hand was tied and all through his lifetime, he lived a miserable life. Maybe your mother's hand was tied. Some of you, the hands of your siblings, I come holding the key of David, given by the God of heaven himself. In the name of Jesus, may those chains be loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Man of God, 
I release you. It's time for your ministry to open up. I release you. Apostle, prophet, teacher, makatosh keteketa. Every altar sitting on your ministry. Every altar sitting on your ministry. Be released now. When Jesus was buried, it was not just enough that he was put in a tomb. The Bible said a stone was used to cover that place. So when Jesus resurrected, it was not just enough to come out to rise from the dead. That stone needed to be rolled away so he would come out. Same thing happened with Lazarus. Let me roll away any stone. When it was time for Lazarus to come back to life, ay, ay, ay. let me speak to someone. Everything dead in your life, hear the word of the Lord. Talita Kumi, come alive, come alive, come alive. Every mantle, every door of favor, every opportunity that has been closed over your destiny. Everything that has died, hear the word of the Lord. Your influence, your relevance, come back to life now. Come back to life now. He said, Son of man, can these bones live again? He said, Only thou knowest. He said, Prophesy. I want to prophesy. Oh, bones can come back to life. Dead businesses can come back to life. Dead spiritual dimensions. You used to have dreams, prophetic encounters. You used to pray for hours, but now something has happened to your life. May that fire come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Hear me. When there is an attack in your life, there are three things that you will lose. Number one, the first thing that you will lose to tell you that the devil is attacking your life is your peace. The second thing that you will lose when the devil is attacking your life is the gift of man. If you lose money it was not an attack it can just be a business mistake but when you lose men I assure you it's an attack hmm. hallelujah look at this every point in the life of Jesus men and angels came to attend to him but when he was on his way to go to the cross men ran away from him only one man out of the multitudes of people he had helped to build and raise and do all of this one walked with him and held the cross for him aside from John and his mother at the cross so when you begin to lose your peace number two when you begin to lose the gift of man it is an attack from the pit of hell Hallelujah. The third thing that you will know as a sign that is an attack is passion. Passion for the things of God. Passion for your destiny. Passion for actualizing your goals. Nothing matters again. Your fight, the Bible says the zeal of the Lord will perform this. There is something called the zeal of the Lord. When you lose your peace, when you lose men, when you lose passion, know immediately 
that there is an attack. I want to declare these three things over your life before we sit down. Number one, the Bible says, now the Lord of peace himself will give you peace always and by all means. I want to prophesy that by all means dimension of peace. That means whatever it takes for your peace, in the name of Jesus, may God make it so in your life. That by all means order of peace, enjoy it in the name of Jesus. Number two, there are some of you who have jobs, but you do not have men. Some of you have intellect, you don't have men. Some of you have churches, but you do not have men. Men are very important. Men are in many cases a sign that God is with you. I have taught you that the proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call to your life the ministry of men. I call to your life the ministry of men. Enjoy the ministry of men. Enjoy divine connectors. Enjoy men of influence. Enjoy gifted men. Enjoy burden bearers in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, before you sit, let me pray for your passion. Some of you, your dreams have died because you are no longer serious about it. Everything you said you would do this year, the zeal, some of you even for ministry, you may be men and women of God, but sincerely, that zeal again, the zeal to fast gone, zeal for God gone, zeal for your goals gone, the resilience to push towards your destiny is gone. Right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I'm speaking as a prophetic word for someone, let your zeal be restored. Let your zeal be restored. Your zeal for the house of God. Your zeal for the things of God. Your zeal for the pursuit of your destiny. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Please open your mouth in one minute and receive. I declare that I receive in the name of Jesus. For those in front, I decree and declare the hand of God rests upon you. That which you have been delivered from will never return to you again. You walk in the liberty that is in Christ. Go and return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, if you're a man of God here, please listen. It is very good to be excellent and organized, but it's also very important to be discerning. Because one moment, God, when God is sending people to come here, he's attentive to the need of everyone. Even though they may seem like there are thousands of people and tens of thousands others following by way of internet let me tell you when god deals with men he deals with men corporately but he deals with men individually are we together now for the sake of one person god can wake a man of god and say make sure you suspend five minutes of your sermon until you address that person's pain this is the God that we serve. So um, whether you are in this auditorium or all of the overflows to the basement or outside or following by way of internet, please do not allow the devil deceive you that you are so far, you are beyond sight. That means you don't know who God is. The Bible says Jesus left one side of the sea. The disciples almost lost their life and went to Gadara to meet only one man delivered that man, set him free, and returned back. That's how far he can go for the sake of one person. Hallelujah. So when God brings words like this, among the many things that these words reveal is the depth of his love. He lets you see and he lets you know that for your sake, that when he's sending you to church, you may be seated inside or seated outside and you may be wondering, I don't think I count. 
among the tens of the thousands of people around but that's not the way God works he can send a word and make it look like you are the only one in that church and address your issue and address your issue there are times you can be thinking and say God in my simple faith if you are the one talk to me about this and the man of God can stop his sermon and address that issue because God wants to go that far to give you confidence that he is dependable <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord all right so be seated for one minute again we'll pray don't be tired of praying ask the Lord again to reveal his counsel to you go ahead pray let it be from the depth of your heart let it be from the depth of your heart are you praying don't be tired hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now I want you to listen I'm going to give a prophetic word to someone and when I give this prophetic word it's not a song it's coming as spirit and life for someone is a continuation of something God began to talk to you about hallelujah this is a song that God gave me many years ago but I've not been allowed to sing it while I was praying in addition to this I heard that song again and I knew that it was a prophetic word I'm not a musician my own is to scatter the gates of hell and establish the purposes of God whether it's by singing whether it's by preaching all that is are we together Yakare Yakare Ya kare Yesu ya che ya kare Listen Ya kare Ya kare Ya kare Yesu ya che ya kare Ya kare Ya kare Ya kare Yesu ya che ya It's a prophetic word. Help them, please. This is part of my teaching. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I've returned back. This is my assignment. Yakare means it is over. Yakare means it is finished. When Jesus hung upon the cross, he said it is finished. Take it high for me, please. In the name of Jesus, you came to church. It's, it's a song that God put in my spirit. It's not a special number. I'm speaking to your spirit, man. Ya kare Ya kare Ya kare Yesu ya che no matter the limitation Ya kare Ya kare Yesu ya che Ya kare Yesu ya che Ya kare Ya kare She baka tosa ni brande ke baba It's over. Surely there is an end. Dear man of God, dear businessman. Yesu ya che ya kare 
Listen, you see, an apostolic and a prophetic ministry is a deeply spiritual ministry that operates very strongly by the gift of discernment. Let me tell you, if this is all the service today and we suspend the teaching and do this, it is still a successful service. Are we together now? For some of you, this night, you go back home to sleep, you will hear this song again. It doesn't matter whether you can speak outside or not, but this time around, you will not be the one singing it. You will hear it from the bowels of your spirit. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. Oh, someone hear me. It looks like ministry is not opening up. Surely there is an end. Everything that has a beginning has an end. That sickness will not kill you. I assure you. Cancer has an end. HIV has an end. Fibroid has an end. Disappointment has an end. Ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, Yesu ya che ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, Yesu ya che ya kare, Yesu ya che ya kare. Yes, we are change in your life. Yes, we are change the negative seasons. Yes, we are change Hallelujah. Please play the strings for me. See, the Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess it says but be ye filled with the spirit and among the many signs that you are full of the spirit is that you will begin to speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs spiritual songs are not special numbers you must know how to align your spirit there are times that god will give you a song that song carries an anointing. Once the anointing comes on you, the song fades. You will not even remember it again. That song was not a special number. It was a ladder to usher you into a realm. Please don't be distracted. God is doing something tonight. For some of you, God is responding to the prayer you prayed yesterday. The prayer you prayed last week. Some of you, you have been on fasting and prayers, asking questions. God said, go to church. He said, when I came to the house of God, then understood I. We are going to sing this song one more time. Whether you can sing it or not, you just listen. It's not a special number. It's a prophetic decree to the heavens. Oh, it has come to end. When God says it is over, it means it is over. When God says it is over, it means it is over. You will sing it over your finances. You will sing it over your health condition. Listen, he said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. So shall I be saved from my enemies. There are songs in the spirit called songs of deliverance. Are you ready? Ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, Yesu ya che ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, Yesu ya che ya kare. Yeah, 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 yeah
It matters who is speaking. Yes, we are carry. Jesus is more than a prophet. Yes, we are carry. The owner of the heavens and the earth. When he speaks, it is final. When he says you are lifted, you are lifted. When he says you are blessed, you are blessed. Yes, we are carry. In your life. Yes, we are chain Yes, we are chain Me girma ya chain ya kare. Sarki ya chain ya kare. Ya kare. Ya kare. Yes, we are chain ya kare. Ya kare, ya kare. For a barren woman, this is your song. Yesu ya che ya kare. It's over. Yesu ya che ya kare. Over that unemployment. Yesu ya che ya kare. Listen, God is called Alpha and he's called Omega. The Bible calls him the beginning. It also calls him the end. When you watch a movie, the movie begins with all kinds of motion pictures. Then they say starring. They will list all the people. When you get to the end of the movie, you don't just know it because maybe the enemies are defeated. You see it written, the end. That means stop watching. It is over. All through my church tonight, please let this song be ringing in your spirit. This is a song that God has given someone for the season. Carry it to your room. War with it. Sing with it. You are not a musician. Wake up in the night. Sing with it. Mention all the things that must be over because he spoke it. Yes, we are Cheya Carry. Yes, we are Cheya Carry. The old season. Yes, we are Cheya Carry. The old level of the anointing. Yes, we are Cheya Carry. Yes, we are Cheya The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Ah. This song is a revelation. I'm praying that it will enter your spirit. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Serki a Cheya Kare. Me Girma a Cheya Kare. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, su ya che ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, su ya che ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, su ya 
Sarah, you will not always be barren. One day they are about to rejoice with you because the giver of children in the name of Jesus Gideon you will not always be hiding a day will come you will be the captain of a mighty army David you will not always be in the wilderness there is an anointing looking for you from a prophet Saul your donkey will not be missing forever one day it will be found and with gallancy and honor it will return back home Jesus you will not only remain in the grave always no after three days you will come back again and then be seated on the throne with honor man of god hear this this is a word for you you may cry but hear the word of the lord Father, we are people who are sensitive to your operations and you gave us the grace to move in this dimension tonight. Lord, we hear that which you are speaking and we declare by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of grace that over the lives of our global family, everything that does not represent the counsel of God in the name of Jesus, the king has spoken it comes to an end in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please be seated the king is also the judge of the earth there are altars that have vowed not to let people go in the judicial system we have what we call the Supreme Court and on matters of election and whatever, when you go to the Supreme Court, there is a panel of judges. And once they sit down and decide, I had the privilege to be in a nation just when they finished their election and the Supreme Court needed to decide on some matters. And when they decided that the election, the candidate who won, it was so, it remained so because the king had spoken it doesn't matter what any demonic altar is saying over your life if God has spoken and said your family must rise it must be so it doesn't matter what dream of death you are seeing that everybody around your life seems to die and you are afraid let me tell you if the king has spoken and said long life it is long life for you Don't say, but apostle, someone else trusted God and it did not happen. <clears throat> God deals with people personally. Yours is to listen to the voice of the king. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's see how far God will help us tonight. Wherever we stop, we stop. Hallelujah. Are you ready for tonight? Job 22 and verse 29 i'm speaking tonight on the reality of supernatural exemption the reality of supernatural exemption please listen very carefully this message for some of you in connecting to what we are discussing now can be a lifeline it can literally be the difference between life and death the reality of supernatural exemption grant us understanding oh God in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says when men are cast down koinonia thou shall say there is a lifting up it says and it shall save the humble person please look up exemption is part of the many secrets and mysteries in this kingdom that help the believers in Christ to walk practically in dominion. Are we together now? Among the many benefits that God has given us that the faith life provides is the possibility 
to activate supernatural exemption in your life, in your home, in your family. How real is exemption? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13. Jesus himself was teaching the disciples to pray. And he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Do not lead us in the path that goes to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Psalm 125 and verse 3. Psalm 125 and verse 3. Let's read it together. It's a prophetic word for someone. Ready? One to read. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. That means there are some prayers that you need to pray that some trouble should not come near you. Because if it does come, it can lead to various compromises. Even though you may be a sincere person, it says, lest the righteous put forth their hands in iniquity. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Psalm 91 and verse 7. The reality of supernatural exemption. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right side, but it shall not come near thee. Say amen. amen. Shout a loud amen again. Amen. One last scripture, Job chapter 5, from verse 19 to 23. Job chapter 5, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch you. Believe it, don't wait until when you cross your hands and you do not have the light that builds a defense for you. Satan will have access to come around your life. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything in me. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war, from the power of the sword. 21, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Amen. 22. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Amen. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Amen. I like 23. It says, for thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. Amen. Write this down please. Exemption means to be free from an obligation or a liability that has been imposed on others. Exemption means to be free from an obligation or to be free from a liability imposed on others. Imposed on others by men by circumstances and by spiritual factors. Let me take it again. Exemption means to be free from an obligation or from a liability imposed on others, either by men, by circumstances, or by spiritual factors. When you are free from an obligation that others have to do or go through, when you are free from a liability that has been imposed on others, we say you have been exempted. To be exempted means to be excluded, especially from a negative outcome or a negative consequence. Hallelujah. This is one of the systems of advantage that the saints can access in Christ to help them maximize their lives and destinies and to shine forth as light. Genesis chapter 4 please verse 13. Genesis 4 and verse 13. We are considering the reality of exemption. Is there such a biblical phenomenon as exemption? This is Cain and Abel. Now realize that Cain killed Abel. Remember out of jealousy and envy he killed Cain, um, Abel and the Lord appeared to Cain and cursed Cain. Watch this now. Cain said unto the Lord 
my punishment is greater than I can bear. We are reading to 15. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. It says, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Watch this. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any man finding him should kill him. Who set a mark? Cain made a plea and said, Listen, I know that I'm already in trouble. But Lord, what you have said is too much. You have withdrawn something from me. And anyone who sees me will kill me. And the Lord said, okay, this is what I will do. I will place a mark upon you. This mark was not a physical mark. But that mark will compel anybody who sees you to mind their business. And not have to go to kill you. That means there are all kinds of marks on men. Listen carefully. There was something on him that will make everyone who sees him to kill him. Imagine that you are carrying something and someone is minding his business but just sees you and doesn't know what draws the person to you to want to kill you. Then a mark was placed upon him that will make someone who would have killed you just turn. Say, no, 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 I will not touch you. That mark must come upon you this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Please look up. There are many people, including believers, not understanding this mystery has exposed them to all kinds of dangers. There is no difference between an unbeliever and even their lives. They profess a lot of spiritual things, yet you see the tragedies that they fall into. Are we together now? Yes. A man gets up in the morning and is on his way going somewhere. And you don't see him after two hours you ask where are you and they say he's in the police station what happened i was reversing and something came upon me and i hit the convoy of a governor and they said come out and even sit on the ground first this guy was just out to go and buy panadol maybe in a pharmacy or whatever it's not normal my brothers and my sisters are we together just when they finish stealing somewhere they are putting a red tape there. You come and enter the place and the camera snaps you. You are free. But they say the fact that you are in that photo, you will still be there. May the Lord deliver you from evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many people in prison cells today. Let me tell you sincerely, if you probe them, they will tell you I was innocent. But there was something that they did not understand about exemption and they got into all kinds of troubles exemption how many people have bought properties that later found out it was a scam are we together as at the point they were doing it everything was nice everything was real but because there was no mark of exemption maybe there was a court case around it and the person who created that trouble just sold the land made interest and left you in trouble there are people for 30 years, they are still having court cases and unnecessary issues because they do not understand this reality called supernatural exemption. Hallelujah. Jesus prayed a very serious prayer and he said, lead us not into temptation. He says, deliver us from evil. Evil does not look like evil till it becomes evil. Are we together now? So Cain said, my punishment is much and anybody who sees me will kill me. And the Bible says the Lord placed a mark upon him. In Exodus chapter 8, please give it to us. Exodus chapter 8 from verse 22 to 23. Who has a brother by the name Samuel? Who has a brother by the name Samuel? You don't have to come out, just stand. I want to pray. There is a Samuel, I'm seeing the spirit of death. And the Lord is saying to rebuke that spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
I pray for that gentleman, whoever that Samuel is. I don't care what altar wants to kill. I don't know whether he's sick in the hospital or maybe he's just minding his business. By reason of this teaching, I decree and I declare, I use Samuel as a prophetic contact to anybody. If death is eyeing you to make sure you will not finish this year, whether by sickness or by accident, for you or for your children or for your siblings, in the name of Jesus, we shut the mouth of the earth. We shut the mouth of the grave. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Exodus chapter 8 22 exodus 8 22 now watch this and i will sever in that day the land of goshen which in my which which in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies one of the ten plagues now shall be there to the end that thou mayest always know that i am the lord thy god in the midst of the earth next verse it says, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. Thus the swarm of flies. God separated his people in Goshen. And they were not part of that tragedy. But it fell upon the nation of Egypt. When you go to verse 12. Verse 12 please. I mean chapter 12. Exodus 12. The full text is from verse 1 to 14, but let's just go to verse 12 for sake of time. Exodus 12 from verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And behold, it says, the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the houses where ye are listen carefully and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt 14. it says and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and ye shall keep it as a feast unto the lord throughout how many generations that means keep it as an ordinance. I have taught you these things. An ordinance is a written reality in the realm of the spirit. That means teach your children and your children's children that as they sojourn this earth, they are going to meet many, many incidences that will want to rob them of God's glorious destiny for their life. You must teach them this ordinance. That there is danger and there is evil within the land but that what keeps people to last and finish their assignment among the many mysteries available is this reality of supernatural exemption. It says, you shall keep it as a feast throughout your generations and it shall be an ordinance forever. Hallelujah. So we know from scripture that supernatural exemption is real. Listen carefully. God is able to exempt his people from trouble, exempt his people from tragedy. How many people have missed a bus or a plane only for them to find out that the bus that they missed two hours later had an accident and everybody there died, no survivor. And you see their chest beating and they say, my God, so this is what my life would have been. Do you know, respectfully speaking, I know that many people have lost loved ones and this is not to stir up emotions, but there are many people who it was like the eye of a needle for them to still be alive today because they were just one point. They just sensed in their spirit, get up and leave this place. And they left not less than 10 minutes. Terrorists and bandits just came there and kidnapped everybody there. I'm showing you the reality of exemption. In my own life, I cannot begin to tell you the things that God has exempted me from. We passed, when, when crisis was very serious in Nigeria and around the north, I remember one time I was to go from Zaria to Abuja to get a flight 
to Meduguri because most preachers were not agreeing to go and bless the people there and I said no no the believers there need to be strengthened I remember while we we're going the Kaduna Express Road then I got a I think then it was Chanchangi or IRS one of these airlines they just sent a text that the flight had been shifted or cancelled or something like that and I just told the driver then I said can you go to Meduguri it was a Friday afternoon and he said he can go I said let's go we turned I passed Kano just about one hour when there was a bomb blast there was a bomb blast they declared curfew that night we slept in a place called Portiscum for some of you who know the north slept inside the car there I just said to God that night I said Lord for me to live is Christ and to die is gain but I will not die are we together now I made up my mind the military people had to stop us because there was serious fighting happening and they said they shot the place by six on the dot and we were plenty you can imagine a pile of people taxis these trucks that carry cabbage and rice and what everybody was there up until morning I know what it means to be exempted from evil hallelujah one time I was traveling I think I had a series of travels and shortly before a serious plane crash happened in Nigeria not mention the name and, and the airline that time I think I traveled to worry or travel to one of these places and in one of the trips I was in the air when I was sensing very terrible demonic presence within the airspace you see listen there are times when spirits look for particular people but there are times when spirits are not looking for particular people there is a certain blood requirement so it does not matter maybe for instance the altars demand that you bring 1000 dead bodies so they don't they are not particularly interested in anybody whoever becomes a victim whether of spray bullet whether of whatever the point is there is a count in the realm of the spirit so whoever falls within that badge of 1000 people the, this spirit will steer individuals and you just find out that someone will just cause mayhem it happens whether in America or in Europe don't think this is an African thing this is from the realm of the spirit a man would just look at his wife and kill his wife and kill his child and kill himself three over 1000 997 remaining he does not know that he was summoned in the realm of the spirit to add to a list one of these times I will have the time I have a series I if we are not able to do it this year listen put your seatbelt there are series that I'm going to teach you one of it um, is this mystery of blood not the blood of Jesus just blood and you will know why the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood just because you want to win an election or you want to get a business whatever you go to an altar and he says listen you know what are you willing to bring 50 people 30 ladies 20 guys I said all right let it be done and you find people dying in a way that those who are causing the problem and those who die do not know that they are responding to a summon in the spirit I started sensing this for days it was one time I think we we're going from where now Lagos or wherever to Kano that was when I got to find out that the plane that went before us crashed hallelujah evil is real but exemption is also real hallelujah evil is real but exemption the ability to navigate your way through the tides of wickedness until you stand and remain even to the end this is an advantage that God has given the saints hallelujah there's this thing that drivers or bandits or wicked people they call it one chance you know that that's where you enter a car someone purports to be a driver whereas it's a plan both him and the passengers have you seen that happen to someone they start going with you 
and while you are seated there quietly they will act as if they are all strangers then one person will turn and start misbehaving then you will find out that they were a team and they can even have a backup team somewhere let me tell you most people who get into trouble huh? if you probe them they will say something in me warned me something told me in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for someone's discernment T tonight you will encounter a heightened level of discernment yeah. hallelujah I think it was a, a great man of God, um, Dr. D.K. Olukoya, who gave a story I once heard. He spoke about a gentleman who was rushing to get a flight and travel somewhere. And the man missed the flight. He was so angry. Only for him to hear that the flight crashed and killed the people. Then he got an opportunity to enter a train. He entered the train and the train still crashed. You see, that one, the devil was looking for him as a person and if you think the devil does not look for people find out the story of the madman in Gadara instead of attacking 10 cities I rather attack the one who is mandated to liberate them listen in this end time I will tell you everybody can be a victim of Satan but Satan is not looking for everybody there are people called choice souls. There are people who have covenants, men of God, business people. And Satan has zoomed a system of attack. Knowing that if I get one person, it is equivalent to getting 50,000 people. Even by business sense, it is more efficient to look for that one person. Hallelujah. Is that not the strategy that even terrorists and bandits do? They will kidnap a wealthy man's daughter and say remember this is your daughter so how much are you going to bring person says 10 million say you are joking hear your daughter's cry first by the time you hear the cry of that little girl say do you know what how much now say now you are talking bring maybe 100 million because they understand if they kidnap his PA it will say okay 1 million if he said 5 million say Mr. Man just he's already born again so I know where he's going to go to Hallelujah. I pray this prayer for myself because I know the evil and the wickedness. Listen, my life, I've experienced a little bit in this my small life. You, I told you, my account has been hacked. Hacked by people. Like they withdrew everything on a hot Sunday morning. Debit alert, debit alert, debit alert, debit alert till 1,000 or something was left there. Yes, sir. So, there are some messages that if you don't understand now, don't just learn prosperity alone, learn exemption. Because when you rise and you don't understand exemption, there are many, many things that you will pay the price for. Are we together? Say amen. amen. I know someone, true story who was traveling and he decided to summon courage and drive himself and he parked his car along a forest in the night just to quickly ease himself because he was pressed. He came back and that car would not kick until armed robbers came. Do you think armed robbers just use guns? No. Armed robbers, bandits, all of these people, beyond the physical machinery, there are spiritual forces they have. They send these spirits before they come. But believers are dull of hearing and dull of understanding. You get up in the morning and walk into a trap with your eyes open. He said, has thou commanded thy morning? That means it's a risk to walk into a day you have not spoken to. Have you ordered things aright? Or you just walk into the day? Hallelujah. Let me give you three keys tonight. What are the keys that activate this supernatural exemption in my life and your life? Seeing that we need it as part of the tools for survival in this end time. You need it for your life as a man of God. You need it as a family man, as a career man, as a pastor. 
There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences, I tell you. There are destructions that waste in noonday. And understanding your place and accessing this mystery. Mama, your children leave your house in the morning and they go across the nation. You do not know where they are going to. If they do not understand the mystery of exemption, may God forbid that someone returns back with a tragedy and they just call you to say, we don't know where your child is. The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. He said, I wait for the Lord sustain me. Because you see, when men sleep, many things happen. Listen to my teaching while men slept. When men sleep, many things happen in the night. For instance, when men sleep, Satan comes to sow all kinds of things. Exemption. Somebody sent me a text one day. Some years ago, I was traveling for administration. I woke up in the morning very early to prepare and rush to catch my flight. And he said, Apostle, don't leave. I got up in the morning. I saw yourself. I saw you inside a coffin. This was a ghastly motor accident. And you died. And it's not somebody who just talks nonsense. I'm not talking of people who just come and send nonsense. These are people with a proven track record. And I know that that is the devil's plan. For me to be surprised today that the devil wants to kill me is an insult to my spiritual growth. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, it's, I mean, it's not a thing of, 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 of shock. If as evil as he is, he is still alive. Are we together? He may be dead that he's, if as evil as he is, he's still moving around as an illegal occupant. Has thou considered my servant Job? Said, I came around, but I could not do anything. There was a garrison that was around him. That would be your testimony. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. That Satan will come to your family and say, this is the family we targeted for this October. But as soon as they come, mysteries surround your family like chariots. There will be no penetration point. Satan himself was testifying. I came to Jobo, but I tried everything. There's a play that children used to play in Nigeria. They say, I pass here. Then they'll cover the place and say, no way. I pass here. No way. I pass through your finance. No way. Through your health. Through your prayer life. No way. Hallelujah. I have seen people who as they progress in life, they become shadows of themselves. You know that they have not learned exemption. A man who was blessed or anointed and by the time he's 40, 45, you see him and you're almost, what happened to you? Say life, life, life. This is why I'm teaching you this. What changed? What happened to your health? Me too, I don't know. Things started going wrong. What happened in your finances? My business just crashed. How about your job? I just lost the job. What happened to your children? One became an armed robber. The other one is in the prison in US. The other one just entered the prison last week in Europe. Okay. What of that one who got first class? Oh, a bike hit the person when he went to collect his certificate and he died. And you see the person moving up. Do you know why many people are not serious with God in old age? They will tell you, when I was young, I was at a Reinhard Bunker crusade. I was at a T.L. Osborne crusade. They will say, God failed me. God did not fail them. They just did not understand how the system of the kingdom operates. This is why God is teaching us this. So that you will not join the bandwagon of those discouraging people from being passionate about God. Many people today, I tell you, those who are some of the chiefest advocates of an antichrist life were once in church. They will tell you where was God when this was happening to me? Where was God when I was losing my job? Where was God when I was fasting and praying? Are we together now? I know a lady who died two days before her wedding. After waiting for many years, two days before her wedding, had bought wedding gown, bought all these things, and two days to the wedding, she died. I had the guy collapse too. Whether he died or not, I don't know. 
Don't tell me that's the will of God. The will of God is very clear from scripture. How about someone who builds a house and just at the point where they are preparing for the Thanksgiving, he starts coughing out blood. What is happening? They say something has been wrong in your system for the last five years. You have only six months to live. In the name of Jesus, I speak over someone. Whatever will make you labor for nothing, whatever will make it look like God is not real in your life, I exempt you from it right now. I exempt you from it right now. Please sit down. True story. They were looking for an armed robber around an airport. An armed robber and they had, you know how security people do, they, there was an intel all around and somebody was traveling sincerely and they just saw the person's photo looking, you know how they type it and there's a percentage, uh, you know those, there's a percentage of resemblance or so and that one seemed very high. That's how they stopped that guy there. He said, I'm a responsible gentleman, <clears throat> keep quiet. When you get to where we are taking, you can explain whether you are a pastor, whether you are a missionary, but for now, is that not wickedness? Are you the one who created your face? Somebody that looks like you stole, and now they caught you for it. You will not enter another man's pit in the name of Jesus Christ. Exemption. What are the keys that help people to operate this mystery in their lives? Seeing that the world that we live in is evil. Seeing that Satan seems to be ever determined, especially in this end time, to thwart and abort the program of God for individuals, families, nations, territories. What are the kingdom secrets that, that activate supernatural exemption let me run them down very quickly are you ready number one the first key the first end time strategy to survive and thrive in the midst of the evil that is in the time and the land is your passionate love for God your passionate love for God you want to be exempted from tragedy from evil the first biblical requirement is your passionate love for god not just your love for god matthew chapter 22 please from verse 37 please give it to us jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind reading to 39 this is the first and the great commandment. Second, he says, you shall love your neighbor even as you love yourself. He said, this is the, in, in one of the synoptic accounts, he said, on this hangs the law and the prophets. Passionate love for God. What is there in loving God? First Corinthians 2 and verse 9. What is the implication of, of falling in love with God but as it is written I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared help me finish that scripture for them that not for them that attend koinonia not for them that are in ministry you can be ministry you can give money, you can be a pastor, an apostle. That's not what God is asking you. The realm of exemption is the realm of lovers, genuine lovers of God. The Bible says there are things that God has in store for those who love him. Is someone learning? How do I know that I love the Lord? Psalms 42 and verse 1. I can tell you there are many people who do not understand the power and the value of cultivating passionate love for God. As the heart or the deer panted after the water brooks, he says, so panted my soul after thee, O God. I love you beyond anything and beyond anyone. 
that is the realm where God says now that you have demonstrated that you love me let me honor and reward your love by activating a garrison around your life the realm of lovers is a realm where God himself will be committed to your exemption what are the proof that you love God the Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 21 he that keepeth my commands he said he it is that loveth me it's as simple as that not he that professes I love you he that keepeth my commands hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me what is the second proof that you love God Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God seek ye first the kingdom of God that means passionate love listen carefully is translated into anything anything at all that makes for kingdom come is your obsession the house of God the program of God once it has to do with God it foils that fire within your heart can I tell you there are many of you here who are employers of labor there are people who love you and are passionately committed to the growth of that organization please look up if there is a downsizing happening is it true that there are people you will never downsize the value and their contribution within that company removing them from that company is like destroying the company when they cry thou sizing thou sizing there are people who it does not bother them because they know that their love for that company that corporation that's how it is there are many people who are too important in God's program to be wasted by any altar and any demonic force any fraternity of darkness no they carry this mindset in the name of Jesus I love the Lord with all my heart and I love his program it does not matter what that what schemings of darkness they know that the jealousy of God has been invested upon their life to defend them if that is you say amen, amen. no I has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work. presidents travel I have seen senior executives travel look at me ladies and gentlemen because of their rank because of the position that they occupy and because of the advantage they provide for that nation or that organization there are times that to see a president pass you can almost be annoyed they will stop you from moving there will be a convoy of over 100 cars yet the man is in only one of the cars 50 will pass first with soldiers carrying all kinds of things to shock you to flog you to do all kinds of things even that you are away from the road they can still flog you <laughs> are we together and suddenly you will see the man sometimes he can even be as short as half of me yet it does not matter and he's in that car there is a lesson there that means there is a realm that you get to the kind of supernatural protection there are I've taught you that there are angels that follow men there are angels that follow offices there are angels that follow mantles 
there are aims that follow seasons you see not everybody has the same level of spiritual defense i submit to you potentially yes but pragmatically speaking our physical world has taught us this so when you are in love with jesus christ when you are in love with his house his program genuinely and sincerely that your heart is panting after him you can be sleeping in peace and yet there are many demonic spirits suffering because they thought of doing something to you hallelujah yes. that is the kind of immunity diplomatic immunity that you have to enjoy the bible says they shall take up poison don't go and drink poison find out who he say will take up poison are we together passionate love for god let me submit to you sincerely there are many believers who do not love the lord now i don't mean to insult you but it's the truth i have found out that many christians do not love the lord they are around the things of god they are sympathetic to spiritual things are we together they are affiliated to god but they are not serious with god to be serious with god does not mean to roll and cry you can be rolling and crying and you are far from him you are not even serious are we together there are people who are deeply passionate about god all that is in his heart is all that is in their heart lord that which gives you joy that which advances your kingdom that which promotes your interest this is what my life is about i'm not talking of being a preacher ladies and gentlemen these are some of the things we have to learn from those who have gone ahead of us respectfully speaking especially this my generation of people may god grant us the grace to not only fear god but to love him in the name of jesus christ the Christianity that thrives just around convenience is a joke, not even in this end time. You will not know God that way. You must love him whether it is convenient or not. The issue of convenient Christianity, respectfully speaking, is what corrupted the Christianity in many developed parts of the world. It has to be convenient at my terms. No, sir. When our fathers taught us God, when those who went ahead of us taught us God, they taught us to love him without conditions. They taught us that when you, if God says, listen, if God says to love me, there are no conditions. There are not but if. <clears throat> Whether it works well for me or it does not work well for me, my love for Jesus remains intact. I want to be sincere with you so that you would know those who can secure exemption especially this end time do you know what God what it takes God to bring all of the arsenals of heaven to defend the interests of his purposes now it takes more than just reciting a five minutes prayer it might not Satan uh, plus Jesus amen no 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 genuine love for some of you here the reason why you are not serious with God, respectfully speaking, is the kind of friends and association you have. If you are not courageous enough to lovingly cut yourself from dangerous and destructive associations, don't say it does not matter. I am both old and new school. I've told you this thing already. Depending on what you are discussing, when you are talking about technological advancement and all of that, I am new school. But we are, we are talking about foundational doctrines and truth. I am very old school. Hallelujah. This unnecessary evolution is destroying our generation. It's why we are not seeing the power of God. Passive, careless Christianity, it does not matter. After all, I know that God somehow... Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You want to see the hand of God in your life? You want to see exemption activated over your life? You want to become a recipient of God's defense and jealousy? Love him and watch what he does. 
I hope you know that every believer is the bride of Christ. And the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. The devil wants to come and play games with your life. And God says, it's me you are touching. He comes to stand before you and say, pass through me first before you touch this lady. Show me a man who is a genuine lover of God. I show you a man who has mastered the art of frustrating negative prophecies. You will only talk rubbish for the rest of your life. Show me an organization that is founded upon love and passion for God. I once met a billionaire in this nation and we had the opportunity to talk with him. And I was just learning from him and saying, what would you have to teach me, sir? And he said, let me tell you this. My love for God supersedes every other thing. He said at his age, he still does evangelism and he still does all of these things. He said, money is nonsense. God took him from nowhere and put him where he is. And that blessed me and changed my life. Oh, may I never be too big to show you how much I love you. May I never become too anointed to show you how much I love you. May I never become too great, too popular, too influential. This is what you must pray about. Do you love him? Sincerely so. That's the question he's asking you right now. Do you love him? Do you love him more than money, more than church, more than fame, more than titles? Do you love him or do you just love anointing? Do you love him or do you just love church or ministry? Do you love him or you just like a, a life of enjoyment? I love you. Number two, what is the second key that activates supernatural exemption? Are you ready? discernment discernment you want to be exempted you must understand the mystery of discernment most people today have gotten into all kinds all kinds of troubles because they do not understand the power of discernment we have become victims terrible victims of situations and circumstances today because we have lost discernment what is discernment the dis discernment is the the faculty of perception the ability to perceive the influences behind actions discernment a quality of spiritual perception the ability to know the spirit that is behind a physical activity the ability to understand whether this activity is driven by God or driven by Satan is called discernment. If you use physical things in this end time, you will call many good things evil and you will call many evil things good. You've heard me say even darkness from afar looks like light until it comes near before you will see that it is darkness. It is a risk to trust your senses and impulses alone in this end time. Those who will be exempted from evil ladies and gentlemen are those who will have high level discernment. Discernment to know when to collect and when to say thank you. Are we together? Discernment to see a door open and yet be able to say no. This door, even though it's open, I know that it is not God or it is not the season. Because you've heard me say, even the prison door must be open for you to enter. So just because a door is open, you need to find out where you are going. It can be a door into a prison and you jump there rejoicing only for you to find out that it was a dead end. Hallelujah. There are many gifts you will collect. It's like selling your birthright. You need discernment. And let me respectfully say this, especially to we ministers of the gospel. We have to be careful and sensitive. Yes, ministry requires money. Yes, the man of God requires his welfare and all of this taken care of. But let me tell you, we need high level discernment in this end time. Because there are gifts that when you collect, you have destroyed the integrity of your life and your ministry for many, many decades. There are doors you must not enter no matter how open it is. And it does not have to be evil. You must learn to say no to many good things in your life because the impulse, that, that faculty of discernment 
does not give you the permission to. Hallelujah. There are times you can be embarking on a journey and you just sense a wrestling in your spirit. No. I'm going to teach you how to fine-tune discernment. In fact, let me say it straight to the point. You fine-tune discernment using two keys. One, the Word of God. Two, praying in the Spirit. These are the keys that help to fine-tune discernment. Because there are times what you feel in your heart does not just mean God is not there. It's just fear. When angels appear to humans, they tell them fear not because it's a normal thing with humans. Hallelujah. Touring the unknown will always come with a level of inconvenience. But there are times that doors may seem to be open, but you know there is that check within your heart. What is stopping this trip? I'm, I'm to take this trip and yet... For the last three days, my heart and my spirit have been having no rest. It does not mean to not take the trip. It does not even mean you will die. I want to do this business and I just need to sign it. Five billion. But my spirit and this one, I have prayed about it. I have confessed scripture. I know that my, there is an unease in my spirit. Stop immediately. I don't care how urgent what you want to do is. Stop. Anything that has to be so fast to the point where you override that check in your spirit, you are only giving access to trouble. There are many people today who have crossed the lines of life and death or have been exempted from death by five minutes discernment. Do not play with your peace. Do not play with your joy. Do not play with how scriptural compliant it is the pathway to obtaining whatever it is that you obtain. Because the Bible says the manifestation of the kingdom is in this threefold dimension. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Hallelujah. There are many people today, respectfully speaking, who married armed robbers. They came into Nigeria and spoke and lied to you, said they are in oil and gas, and they even have five companies. Say, really? Your life is about to change. Say, thank God. God has been speaking to me about favor in Koinonia lately. You see, I'm teaching you something. Listen carefully. That Satan is taking advantage of a powerful, genuine message. But some, when everything looks right, and yet your spirit does not agree, stop. There's something God is saying. Is someone learning now? Go back. Shalika Prando Skatiata. You see, when there was a viper hiding in the woods, remember? It was when they set the wood on fire that the viper was revealed. There are many times the fire of prayer can reveal many things that are hidden beyond the surface layer of what you are seeing. I have a job of 350. I have a job of 250. Someone says, wisdom is profit to that. To that. Get that job and... and and smile forever whereas your next level may be with that job of 250 and the Holy Spirit is telling you pray and whilst you are praying Shali Kapranda Gadoski Ataba the Holy Spirit just comes sometimes he will even say leave all the two jobs that's right hallelujah and then by the next week someone just comes and says we're expanding our services Someone recommended you to us. Um, would you mind being the African director of this company? For starters, your salary is 3.5 with all the benefits per month. When the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion, you will stand there as if you are dreaming. And people will say you were lucky. No, you were not lucky. You were discerning. Please hear me, believers. If you do not cultivate discernment in these end times, you will get into trouble, especially with men and associations. You will need to learn this. There are many, many people who got into trouble in their lives because they joined a wrong chariot. It was through discernment the Spirit of God told Philip, join this chariot. And that led to the salvation of the utopian Enoch and so on and so forth. But there are many people. It depends on who is in your boat. 
if Jesus is in your boat, you will survive the storm. But if Jonah is the person you are carrying, even if you don't die, your business will die, other things will die. They lost so many things and Jonah was sleeping. Instead of him to just confess and say, sincerely, gentlemen, so that you don't waste this thing further, I am the reason. They were casting lots. He was seeing it. He still kept quiet. Till the lots fell on him. He said, it's true. I'm the one. Now, you, you can imagine that kind of thing. Hear me. I was talking to someone and I was teaching him that a wicked person, a selfish person, and a foolish person can commit the same havoc to your life. A wicked person, a selfish person, and a foolish person are they are effective tools in the hands of Satan. If Satan looks for a wicked person and he does not find him, the next person Satan will look for is a selfish person. If Satan does not find a selfish person, he will find a foolish person. All three can be used to, to do the same thing in your life. The only difference is that a wicked person will be happy before and after. A selfish person will suddenly realize that I am selfish. A foolish person will be open to his or her foolishness. But all three, as far as committing havoc to your destiny is concerned, you need discernment. There are many people who will come into your life, they are not wicked, but some may be very self-centered. And the devil will still use them to cause the same pain that a wicked man would have brought. There are people in your life who may not be self-centered. They may not be wicked, but they are bankrupt of spiritual light and illumination. They can still be used to cause the same thing. You have to pray and be discerning. Judas was not wicked. He was only selfish. He wanted to make money out of Jesus. He still led to the death of Jesus. Peter... You see that? Peter was not self-centered. Peter was not wicked, but Peter was foolish. He still denied Jesus and ran away. Thomas was outright foolish. You see, all of them, they still cause trouble and pain. Are we together? You have to learn this. Discernment. You build discernment by understanding the word of God. You build discernment by investing in prayer. Do not trust anything until you have prayed. Let me say it again. Do not trust anything, no matter how right, no matter how authentic, whether your decisions, your products, your business, I don't care what you want to do. Take it to the place of prayer. The hymn writer says, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Lord, this company is about to expand. I told you about Koinonia. In 2013 or so, just two years when we started Koinonia, there were already a lot of suggestions to come into Abuja. And it was a great idea. I mean, God was already doing great things. Only to go to the Lord in prayer, such a great idea. And I had a vision. I saw a plane lifting from Zaria and coming down to Abuja. It was written on it, E and I. Just when it arrived Abuja, it crashed. I knew exactly what was said. A lot of people, do you know how many people have, have tried to open Koinonia offices around the world? To say, Apostle, we've opened it in advance. I told them, I said, I love you. Please close it back. Close it and be falling online. Don't worry, you are part of the vision. You just relax. Well, God has sent us across the globe. You see, the way of the spiritual man can look deceptfully slow. But one step with God will bring 10, 20 years together. Are we together now? I rather crawl with God than run with Satan. I rather crawl with God one step after three, three years than to have a thousand steps now only to find out that it was Satan that was escorting you. Because the way Satan does is that he will give you the food to eat. After 10 years, he will say, pay me. I forgot to tell you that it's not free. Discernment. There are many people who relocated out of Nigeria just when their blessing was coming. Because a door opened. Satan opens doors. 
And there are many people whose destinies are not in Nigeria. But because there was no discernment, they are still here and they cannot connect to anything going on in Nigeria. My prayer for you, ladies and gentlemen, is that the discernment you need in this end time for every aspect of your life, through prayer and in the place of prayer, may you find it in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the greatest tragedies of the church in Nigeria and Africa is blind copying and blind imitation. The moment something seems to work, people may not understand the altars and the covenants that activate those things. Everybody just jumps into it. That's why when there is failure, there is mass failure and catastrophe. Hallelujah. Blind copying. The second key is discernment. Please be a believer that prays over everything. If you don't trust your hearing, call on the attention of seasoned brethren who love God. Don't call a lazy believer who has never had anything for himself. The two things that he had was not God. And you say the person should pray with you. What are you going to hear from that meeting? There are people who have been given the gift of the seeing ears, the seeing eye, and the hearing ear. I'm about to expand. And sometimes God will just give you a scripture. It does not have to be a flamboyant revelation. And I will increase your greatness and grant you rest roundabout. That is already a prophetic word. Until God speaks, please do not move. Even if a door is open, sustain the discipline and the maturity to remain. Are we together? When you pray, you will discern the purpose behind what God does in everything he does. Without discernment, you will call everything that carries a negative semblance evil. There are many good things that come in a semblance that looks like evil, but it is a blessing of the Lord. Look at, you meet a woman, a young virgin, and you say, Mary, hail Mary, you are highly favored. And the next thing that happens to her is tragedy. She's about to lose her marriage. She's about to lose everything. Yet the, the angel never came to say, you are highly full of endurance. He said, you are highly favored. What in the world about Mary's life afterwards looked like favor? Yet the Bible says that is favor. So be careful so that you are not binding the next level of your life because you don't have discernment. Hallelujah. There are people you can be in ministry and God can give you an instruction, close down that ministry. You will just think it's a demonic thing. Mm -mm. I shared with you an experience I had before I talk of the third one and then we'll wrap up. A true experience. I was praying for a family. They had been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And as I prayed for them, I had this very strange vision. I'm seeing the man and the woman and three children running around. And then all of a sudden they enter this car and maybe they are going somewhere with the children and they had a ghastly accident and they all, the children all died. So I'm back to myself and I'm praying with them and I said, sorry, did you lose your children? They said, no, we've never had children. I said, you've never had children? And I had to say, oh God, what is this that you are showing me? So what did I see? I now understood that what they call delay was God saving them from an eternal memory of pain over certain things. There are some things that look like delay. It's because God has seen that you are not prepared for the attack that will come with that blessing. So he will suspend it until certain revelations build capacity in you. Then he will give you access to it. There are many people who just go and start ministry or start business and in six months, you go and see somebody who tells you, my father was a, a wizard, my mother was a witch, my elder brother has been a, a wicked spirit. And you just stand and say, well, let me tell you, I just finished a Bible school. You lay hands on all three of them. The man is watching you as you are laying hands on him. Instead of you to ask why he's watching you like that, after praying, by the next day, one hand is not, you, you will not lift again, your leg will not lift again, and, and you are now wondering what happened to me. The man was watching you. God warned you and said, you just stay. One day you'll be a pastor. Just be patient. 
There are many things you don't know about demonology. There are many things you don't know about the believer's authority. But your blood is rushing, you have revelation. Now you go straight to a village. The missionaries there warned you before you arrive. You ignored all of them. You don't have knowledge. You now went to lay hands and then you had the gods to carry hoe or cutlass and scatter the altar that they built there. Brought down the tree and, were, and was laughing. Just because nothing happened in one week. There are rules of engagement. I'm not making you afraid. We have authority in Christ, but blind authority, authority works with knowledge. Hallelujah. There, there were many Israelites in Egypt crying for help. Why didn't God pick any one of them and say, after all, you are Jews. Go and talk to Pharaoh. Was that how God brought deliverance? If it was all about talking to Pharaoh, why did it take 40 years to prepare one man? What is it about Pharaoh that you must be prepared for 40 years? Hallelujah. Many men of God have carried all kinds of trouble on their head because of touring levels in the spirit where they did not have the spiritual capacity out of pride i am a man of god you just go and vent the bible says let every man minister according to the measure of grace there are stratifications in the spirit it is true hallelujah i told you about my experience years ago in the mortuary they took me to go and raise a a, a dead body in the mortuary I, I went the bible says you heal the sick and all these things and i went quietly i prayed for the the dead body I prayed for the dead body. I prayed for, I, as far as I'm concerned, everything I spoke there was correct. Even till today, I will still do the right thing. The same thing. But for some reason, the dead body did not come back to life. I prayed a number of times and they closed me there. Yes. Can I tell you, listen. When you hear that a dead body comes back to life today, that rehearsal has been done many years ago. Don't make a mistake of believing. I need to encourage people so that when you see people's results, you don't think people just jumped into it overnight. No, sir. No, sir. Hallelujah. I've prayed for people on wheelchairs. Absolutely nothing happened. Nothing. When I say nothing, not maybe even like maybe a little movement of absolutely it's as if you came to make a fool of yourself there that's the price it takes for power when your ego and yourself dies then the glory can rise from you when you see the miracles and the things that god does today that was the pathway that led to it israel you may love deliverance but not everyone can stand before pharaoh there is an encounter of the burning bush and a season of training that qualifies you. The point I'm trying to make is that you must discern. There are many of you, the issues and the matters you are praying for, you do not have the spiritual capacity to receive with accuracy what you want to hear. You will need to tap into the supply of higher and experienced people who have taught these dimensions of the spirit with stability and power. Are we together? When you are, want to make sensitive decisions like leaving Nigeria or quitting your job, you don't just sit down and walk with instincts and say, I had God. It is a very serious decision. You need to dedicate yourself sometimes through fasting and prayer and even call on the attention of seasoned brethren, people who have a proven track record of hearing. That's how it works, discernment. I'm saying this right now because there are some of you about to destroy yourselves with wrong and careless decisions. Everybody's leaving to Europe. Everybody's leaving to America. Who told you you are part of them as far as God's blueprint is concerned? Hear God first. Hear God first. Hear God first. Number three. What is the third price? Is someone learning? What is the third price? 
attention. A quick recap, number one, passionate love for God. Number two, discernment. Number three, kingdom service. The third key that activates the reality of supernatural exemption in the life of an individual is kingdom service. Promoting God's interest and promoting his purposes in the earth. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread. Is that in your Bible? And thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. But it is under the guise of service. To serve God, listen carefully, to serve God does not just mean to be a worker in church. I hope you know you can be a worker in church and yet you are not serving God. What really serves God is not your hands, it's your heart first. There are people who are in church just because of the ritual of being in church. There are people who are just there because they were mandated there but they are not genuinely serving God. Serving God comes from your love for him, but it comes from your determination to promote the interest and the purposes of God. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. Give us Daniel 12 and verse 3, please. And they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars, even forever and ever. This is the heritage of those who serve God for a living, who serve God for life. You don't have to be a preacher to serve God. You don't have to be a worker in church or that is profitable. But beyond being a worker, one who serves God is not just one who serves in church. One who serves God is one who is obsessed and determined to see that the kingdom of God and the interest of God is promoted and established through your life. Service is a weapon of exemption. Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38. Give it to us quickly, please, so we pray. Isaiah 38, beginning from verse 1. Watch this now. Service is a weapon. The Bible talks about Hezekiah, that he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said, set your house in order for you are going to die things will not work for you go to verse 5 please for the sake of time hallelujah now the bible says hezekiah cried unto the lord and said remember how i have worked diligently before you when you study the bible you will know that hezekiah gave and he served god with his everything and the lord told the prophet isaiah go back again he says go and say to hezekiah Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Reading to verse 8. It says, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. Reading to 8. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he had spoken. 8 now. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. God had to reverse time to prove to a man that this is how much I'm committed to defending and exempting you. Isaiah was a genuine prophet, but service overturned his prophecy. Let me tell you the truth. Service is powerful. Service is powerful. Job chapter 36 from verse 11 and 12. Job 36, 11 and 12. If they obey and serve him, not obey alone. If they obey and serve him, ladies and gentlemen, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Consequence, verse 2. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. 
serving God with your time serving God with your energy serving God with your influence serving God with your resources is a guaranteed channel to experience exemption everything God has given me belongs to him and everything God has given me must serve him must M U S T if God gives me 10 naira I dare not lie down and worship God and my 10 naira is standing it must bow to everything when I bow to worship the king everything that I have must join to bow and worship him too is someone learning you serve God with your influence God has made you a director God has made you a senator how does the program of God, how can it be promoted using this? I'm not talking about blind fanatism that victimizes people based on race and gender and religion, no. But I'm talking about finding a space in what you do to see that the program of God is enhanced. Let me tell you the truth. If the purposes of God is not represented in your growth, your growth is a waste. If the purposes of God is not enhanced through your resources, then that wealth is absolutely useless from an eternal standpoint because nobody has died and gone out of the earth with their money or gold or jewelry or whatever it perishes here hallelujah there are many well people who have never given to the program of god i'm not talking about this hypocritical thing that hypocritical thing that people do just for name i'm not talking about politics I'm talking about people who love God sincerely right from when God was starting with us from nothing if God gives 10 naira at least a sizable portion of that 10 naira more everything belongs to him but something sizable must go into it I don't know if I should say this or not but recently the Lord gave an instruction because every time as a ministry we're moving into higher seasons there are many prophetic instructions that come both for me and for the ministry and the Lord gave a very serious instruction about a seed to sow as a ministry and when God said the amount even me I had to take a deep breath remember all I have is his own everything Koinonia has but there are some instructions that when you hear you have to say wow uh, let the grace for it to come with that instruction you see that now, I'm saying this to encourage you so when God said this is what koinonia is going to sow for the next level of their life then the Lord came with another instruction that surprised me he said two times what koinonia is sowing is what you are going to give as a personal seed hmm. yes sir I'm not saying this I hope you are, you are my people so I'm teaching you twice ah. those are the times that you will regret fine-tuning your ears why did I fast why didn't I just assume that I didn't hear him and you know those kind of instructions come with clarity and precision if you want a dream he will show you you want another vision you a prophetic confirmation it will still come God for you twice that amount and I said Lord everything belongs to you I can't stand and be teaching God's people here if I cannot give you this much shame on me and my spiritual experience I said everything will go take all of me all of me Lord be careful with that song you're singing Be careful with that song you are singing, ladies and gentlemen. By the time God gives you instructions, everything. There are some of you, if you give a seed like that, you don't have to tell anybody. People will know something is wrong with you. I say you have been depressed. You are not, it's not clearly not, it's not COVID, it's not malaria. Are you all right? And I say, my brother, if I tell you what. I have done even you it will affect you so I should not even tell you so don't see God lifting and honoring people and just say they are lucky no find out what goes on beneath 
I'm, I'm not saying this to cajole or manipulate you. As for me and God, Abba, no, he knows. Cost be the day I cannot give God anything in my life because of um, whatever, no, everything. Money, the, the least of what I will give him. That is the reason why there are many warriors that fight in my life. It's not only angels. Seeds are warriors. They can stand at the gate and speak. When you see God increasing this ministry and opening doors, don't think this is magic. God is not a magician. He does not play games. You are either in this sincerely and seriously or forget about it. When God wanted many sons, he carried his own son. He didn't carry angel Gabriel or Michael. He carried Jesus, sowed Jesus as a seed. While he cried, the father turned his face, but he still had love. And he now brought many sons into glory. When you see fathers of faith like Bishop Oedipo shout and say, I can never be poor. They may not say it, but go and find out some of the things they are doing. There are many people today who, if the devil wants to attack them, the number of souls that their seeds in mission agencies have saved, that's what will stand as a defense against them. And say, do you know 10,000 people got born again through this man's seed? By what means will you kill the person? Many people making empty noise. The realm of the spirit has no recognition for the sacrifices they have made. Gather unto me my saints, he says. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah. Because I knew that Koinonia was stepping in. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, I say to you with humility, if you think you have seen anything about this ministry, it is a joke. This is just warm-up. This is child's play. There is a flight. You know how a flight moves. It starts moving as if it's joking. And then when it gets to the wrong way, it just runs and in less than one minute, it has attained height unimagined. That is what we are doing. But it comes at the wings of sacrifice. One time I was traveling somewhere and the pilot just announced that we have to delay a bit because they have to refuel the plane and he gave us the explanation he said because it's carried more load than expected i said wow that's interesting knowledge so everything has been calculated it's now carried more load than expected they need to put some more fuel my altar is calling you oh god my worship is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. I remember a time years ago when God gave me an instruction. 72 hours I was with God. My eyes did not see the sun, whether it was morning or night. 72 hours in his presence praying generating energy and generating fire no ladies and gentlemen we don't say these things to brag we say these things to show you the inner workings what you see on the altar is this is the, the, this is not the engine room you have to go behind and see the layers of the sacrifices the blood that drips upon this altar Hallelujah. Those who join occultism, they will ask them, when you want to step into certain dimensions, they will ask them, who can you give? Your wife, your child, whatever it is, or yourself. Say, no, no, God forbid, none of them. Say, okay, go back. You are not ready to do anything. There are others who come with determination and say, I want to get that political office. Kill anybody you will kill, including your wife. Let her die. I need that thing. This is what they do in the negative. But there are many believers to give God your time. If they give God 30 minutes of their time, they must hear a thank you from heaven. Oh, no. 
10 minutes prayer and they want the fire and grace upon your life that can shake territories God is not a magician ladies and gentlemen let me tell you 30 minutes sleepy Bible study of just running through the same verse again and you want God to trust you to speak to nations and kings it does not happen that way God is not unjust he rewards the labor of love is someone learning and then the worst one is money ah, people can obey anything but once God says ten naira he say God you are wicked how much is here look at it yourself in case you are not seeing and God says you, you said that to me yes to you since you are inconsiderate God says that's all right keep your money and keep that realm then you get angry and say but we were working together but were you doing the same thing let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body listen when I was putting together that seed, please help them. This was the song I was singing. Ah, no. There are seeds that will touch your spirit. You will know that something, something touched the heavens. I don't know what would have happened if God told me, okay, you are going to give twice. Maybe I would, maybe my hearing over Koinonia's amount, because this is mathematics now. If God is going to say twice, you will almost hear nothing so that the twice <laughs> and until he told me and it was a serious seed you can imagine a ministry like this what seed it will give then God comes to me and say for you your instruction is twice that amount I said yes Lord this was the song I sang while I was praying hmm. oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear oh speak from your throne and I'll hear from the earth oh speak from the heavens for my altar is calling you oh, my altar is calling my praise oh God take my praise let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Please hear me. The covenant of service is a deep mystery that can bring supernatural exemption. If anybody ever tells you that this ministry went down in any form whether financially or spiritually I stand respectfully speaking to tell you tell them it's a dream and a joke you do not know the covenants and the mysteries upon which this vision is built one of it is just what I told you the mystery of sacrifice for as long as the earth remains for as long as the earth remains listen I teach you these things because I love you I teach you these things these are the mysteries that we have engaged that have brought us by the Spirit there is nothing to hide there is no magic in this thing how do you get up the Bible said there is he that scattereth and yet increase it scattereth your time your energy 
Hallelujah. I returned back last week and as soon as I arrived, I couldn't make it for Koinonia, sadly. And then by the next day, I had to go and preach for Baba Deboye and the redeemed at the camp. You know, sometimes when I'm traveling, I'm just looking and say, God, my time, my energy, my body. But then very quickly, I remember that when I gave him everything, I meant it. This conditional Christianity of one leg here and another leg here, believe me, is why many people never taught certain levels of power and grace. You want to see levels of wealth? You want to see levels of increase and grace? I may not boast to know everything. I am a student myself. But believe me when I tell you there are some things I know. There are things you can do to close certain generational doors of lack, poverty, failure. You can wave certain realms goodbye. As for this anointing, it will only be ever increasing. No. It, there's nothing to boast about. It's not a lie. You will never come here for koinonia and not find the fire of God burning upon this altar. You will not invite someone to come for koinonia and the person shares the grace and goes back and says nothing happened. You just watch. That covenant follows you. It's more than a message. You may not know what has come upon your head. When we stand to speak, we are not entertainers. I'm not a comedian. When I tell you, lift up your hands and I bless you, believe me, it is more than the speakings of a man. There is blood dripping upon the altar. That is why there is no territory that will not open up. No. The earth is governed by laws. Let the fire from your altar. We're about to pray. Let the fire from your altar. Let the fire from your altar. I had a vision a few weeks ago. I say some of these things just to bless you. And I saw a number of nations calling as a nation to come and pray for their parliament and pray over the nation as a nation to rededicate it to God. And the Lord said, this is the dimension that you are going into. Now, when you hear some of these things, it is, I'm saying it to you so that when it happens, you will know that there are people that hear God. And then for you to know and to trust, listen carefully, to know and to trust that you are connected to a vision that the love and the jealousy of God has so defended what we stand for. And he does this for his namesake. I'm sharing this with you so that you will know what should happen in your life and what should not happen. If you turn to your life and see that some things are not happening, you have a right one who is connected to this vision. Some things, don't keep quiet and just let it happen. No. When Saul met David, he said, whose son are you? I need to know the possibilities that come with where you are coming from. We're about to pray. Your passionate love for Jesus. Number two, the spirit of discernment. Discerning seasons, discerning times, discerning moments. And then number three, the covenant of service. The service with your life, your time, your resources. For someone, God is speaking to you and I'm saying, the way you are carelessly walking with God, you may be a victim of these end times. You will just walk with your eyes open into trouble. It takes a very deep level of seriousness with God, serving him with your whole life. To say, Father, I must register it in the realm of the spirit that I'm a useful tool as far as kingdom come is concerned. It should not, he said, Jesus, I know. Where was that register recorded? 
Paul, I know. Have you enrolled your name? Do demons and spirits know that this one is a touch knot? No, don't come near this family. This family has covenanted to serve God. Don't come near. Ah, but their fathers worship idols. Idols nonsense. And the covenant speaks. Let the fire from your altar Let the fire from your altar Please hear me. It's truly a grace for exemption. And I'm going to be speaking it over your life as we wrap up. I have seen God show me mercy. I have seen God show this ministry mercy. God put it in my heart to bring this teaching. The reality of supernatural exemption. You can be exempted from death. You can be exempted from famine. You can be exempted from the ills that destroy men. That is what makes you a savior. You cannot help people being a victim of what they are suffering. You have to be outside of that system of pain to be able to help them. There are some of you here, please hear me. God brought you to church to hear this because your family members may not be able to hear it, but you are the one God is raising. Don't let your family members die in ignorance. If he has found you, let it be that he, your family has found hope. Are we together now? Some of you, by reason of what you are hearing in church today, there is a U-turn that you need to make because the way you are going already, for some of you, you need to stop what you are doing now and for the next one week, submit to prayer and verify many things with God. This business I'm about to do, I'm about to commit 50 million in partnership. I just saw the opportunity, but I have not yet prayed. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything, how many things? By prayer and supplication. You need to wake up and burn the midnight candle. And don't keep quiet until he speaks. When people are snoring away their destinies, snoring away the next five or ten years, you are awake praying. You are a man of God and you want your ministry to blaze. It is not with laziness. Brothers and sisters, don't just copy things because people are doing it. Man te prakatos kate bakata. Shake deliver unto me oh God the secrets that govern the mantle upon my life reveal to me how does it operate if you are David you must understand the mystery of psalmistry otherwise the grace on your life will not speak if you are Elijah you must understand the mystery of the altar that is what activates your anointing if you are Abraham you must understand sacrifice that is the mystery that activates the anointing on your life. Every mantle has its activation system. You must learn it in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, what is the secret that brings partners to my ministry or my vision? What is the secret that draws members to come? Don't just copy things blindly and say, this is how we are doing it. No. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind. For some of you, listen, you go to the place of prayer and God says it's time for your business to expand. The reason why you are small is because you have limited yourself. You should be in Europe now and America and a sudden grace and the spirit of faith will rest upon you and you will start flying like the eagle. There are some of you, your season of training has come to an end. But because you have not discerned, you are still there locking yourself in the room. Whereas the people you are sent to have been waiting, dying of thirst. Because there is no discernment. There are many of you, hear me. God brought you for this koinonia service because there is a unique anointing that must come upon your life. God is preparing you. He has sent you to many places. You are carrying the anointing combinations that you need for your ministry. There are some of you, you are great people of prayer, 
but you are bankrupt of the spirit of revelation and God sent you here because that dimension is what he needs to supply so that you will have a balanced ministry there are some of you you are excellent teachers of the word but your prayer life is extremely poor God has sent you so that you will find that dimension when you come to church learn to discern Lord what are you saying to me for some of you by this teaching God is already telling you that the evil you have been seeing in your dreams and all of that if you understand prayer you can roll it over and throw it away like a toy I know we've taken some time I will not stretch you more than this but in the next two minutes I want you to pray deliver us from evil he said lead us not into temptation someone is about to pray I obtain grace to walk circumspect as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time for the Bible says the days are evil someone pray pray your exemption I'm exempted, exempted from evil, exempted from losses, exempted from tragedy. In the name of Jesus Christ, is someone praying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have an ear that hears and an eye that sees. Someone decree and declare, my path is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter even unto the perfect. There's no retrogression in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those in your home, make sure you are praying. Discernment. Discernment. Passion for God. Passion for God. Passion for God. Lord, restore my fire, restore my hunger, restore my passion, restore my appetite for spiritual things. Take away spiritual laziness, take away lukewarmness from my life. Let my fire not grow cold, not in this season, not in this time, not in this moment. Hunger. Hunger, greater levels of prayer fire, greater levels of the word, greater levels of fasting, greater levels of spending time in your presence. I must build stamina and capacity. The days that are coming will require men of stamina, men of stamina, men of stamina, men of certainty, not men of assumptions, certainty. hallelujah hallelujah you are going to pray for the grace to serve God with everything Lord any idol in my life that would not let me serve you acceptably clear it out of the way clear it out of the way lift your voice and pray not my resources not my energy not my pedigree anything that cannot serve you Take it out of my life. Anything that will not serve you, take it out of my life. Pray. Anything that will not serve you, take it out of my life. Let a new season be opened before me, O God. Let a new season be opened before me, O God. Declare the opening of a new season. Declare the opening of a new season in your ministry, in your life, in your family. Lord, I'm tired of the old. Open me up to a new season. New portals of grace, new portals of fire, profound levels of hunger. Hallelujah. 
I declare over your life anything that is assigned by hell to destroy you between now and December in whatever form whether to come directly or to come through the realm of the spirit manipulating your dreams and visions anything that has been sent by hell in the name of Jesus I cause it to its root now I cause it to its root now hear me whatever in your life has stopped growing because growth is a sign of life are we together now I don't know what has stopped growing in your life maybe the anointing God has God gave you is still at the level last year's anointing is still the same way no new thing in your life no revelation the same level prayer life the same level you are not called into a system of just maintenance you are called into a system of growth growth as a shining light whatever has stopped growing by the power of the Holy Spirit the Bible says at the scent of water I decree and declare may growth happen in that area of your life now in the name of Jesus Christ now please hear me I'm praying again if there is anybody here that in the realm of the spirit among the list of those who are deceased your name is already there written already or the name of your family members I'm praying right now I blot your name from the realm of the spirit I blot your name from the realm of the spirit now hear me there are people who may not die physically but when everything in your life shuts down you are dead even if you are alive I want to pray if anyone here is a victim of witchcraft foundations and any ordinance something has hijacked you you know it you look at your life and you know that your life is under a siege in the name of Jesus Christ be released from it now three more prayers please don't miss it I want to pray for you whatever makes evil look like good and then good look like evil confusing you and destroying you many of you have gotten into trouble today because you called evil good and you walked into trouble i pray for you right now with precision and clarity may your hearing and seeing be corrected be corrected be corrected be corrected your hearing and your seeing let it be corrected in the name of Jesus hallelujah now let me pray against losses whether losses of money losses of opportunities there are many of you nothing good stays consistently do you know the ability to retain is proof of strength in the spirit it says strong men retain wealth it's not just talking about money alone when God gives you things and it does not stay is his wickedness the devil has punctured holes around people's lives and any good thing just evaporates I want to pray for you the spirit that makes you to lose good things good people good opportunities good relationships I command that spirit to leave your destiny now leave your destiny now finally let me prophesy over your life beginning from now till the end December 2022 I want to pray for you I want you to receive this as a prophetic word in the name of Jesus by God who has called me I prophesy to you whatever you are a victim of now either because of the mistakes of lack of discernment anything you have suffered anything that has left your life opportunities you would have enjoyed but simply because you did not hear and see and some of you are saying is it too late to have it back 
by the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the prophetic I reach forth into the past and I bring it back to your future I bring it back as restoration in the name of Jesus Christ In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And every hand that has collected what is your own. Every hand that has collected what is your own. You are there standing but it has never arrived. Because another hand has collected it. In the name of Jesus. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release it to enter your hand now. Hallelujah. A wrong hand collected the blessing of Esau. And Isaac said, This smell is of Esau, but the hand is of Jacob. And the smell is of someone else, but the hand collecting it is of someone else. Again, I'm praying one last time tonight, Koinonia. Any hand that has collected what is your own, in the name of Jesus, I stand by the power of prophecy. I overturn that hand and I force it to release it to you. Listen, some of you by next week you will come here with fearful testimonies of things that just turn around for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. How you know you have been exempted from the pain of this time is that God will force someone to remember you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're wrapping up. Yesterday I was meditating and I had to look at a few letters that were brought to my table and in one of them I noticed it had been in a book, one of my books. So I opened it, probably the man is even following now. And I saw it was a pastor who wrote that letter from Europe since February this year. He wrote that letter to pray for him over a serious critical situation. February, that letter was in one of my books, but I forgot. And because I forgot, that man's miracle hung from Feb. This is me, a man of God, though. It taught me a serious lesson. As soon as I read it, I called him immediately. This was around maybe 10 or 11. I called him immediately. He didn't even know. I told him, this is Joshua Selman. And he screamed. He said, God, you have visited me. And I told him, I said, your letter got to me and I'm seeing it dated February. I don't know when it came, but I slipped it intending to call you. And whatever happened, I forgot. I'm saying that because I want to pray for someone. The truth is that God answered you sins. But the man that God will use to bless you, if an anointed man of God can forget, you can imagine what happens. I'm praying for you. Whoever has forgotten you, and any spirit that has manipulated the memory of helpers so that they will forget you, may they remember you this night. May they remember this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Timing matters. There are things that can arrive too late. The harm would have been done when they get there. Whether resources, whether realms. There are some of you, by reason of this, God is speaking to you and saying, listen, there are some loved ones that need to be here to be free. Don't wait until they are incapacitated or until the devil destroys them. We have to wrap up tonight's service. Someone needs to make Jesus Lord of his life tonight. Let's all stand. We're wrapping up. We believe in the ministry of salvation. 
this is the primary assignment that we have here and someone while listening to me speak the Lord Jesus began to speak to you in this auditorium following online and in the overflows let's minimize moving around we have just a few minutes and we're done I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life there's no point cajoling you already got the message you can be exempted from eternal damnation right now tonight can be an opportunity for you and there's someone else who is saying apostle I for me I need to rededicate my life to Jesus I cannot honestly say I have been walking with God things have gone bad in my life wherever you are I'm going to count one to five we have just one minute for you please I want you to leave your seat with gallancy and boldness and come and stand before Jesus here and for those in any of the overflows please do say make sure you come very quickly I'll begin my counting now don't wait for anybody to be the first you be the first to come and stand here one though I walk through the valleys low I'll fear no evil by the Jesus young and old come to Jesus my heart will trust come we still have a few seconds to receive you may God bless you may God bless you Thank you for your courage. Come to Jesus. He gives you a new beginning. It is always an advantage with Jesus. Always an advantage with Jesus. If you're joining them, please join quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. The greatest prayer you can pray on this side of God's kingdom. The zenith of nobility is to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus over your life. Thank you for making this bold decision for those of you who are in front. I appreciate your courage to be here. Let me tell you this. Jesus Christ is not the founder of a religion. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. The Lord Jesus himself has extended his love to you. In it. Praise the name of the Lord. He can give you a new beginning, beginning from now. Now, you see, the beautiful thing about Jesus Christ is that it's not compulsory but you know by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is gentle and yet so powerful enough to let you know that you need to be in front here. And for those who are watching at home, following by way of television, or a rebroadcast, Jesus is giving you an opportunity to make your ways right with Him. Thank you very much for this bold decision. Please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of total surrender. And I want you to say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you as my savior. I receive you as my Lord and I receive you as my King. I declare that from tonight, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Father, for these ones. You have brought them even by your Spirit. I declare that the grace that keeps may that grace keep you I decree and declare that you will experience the joy of salvation from tonight and that you will continue going from glory to glory in Jesus name I pray may God bless you and thank you for this decision let me request very quickly that you move to my right there are a group of counselors who will receive you in a minute just have your details and you quickly be back to your seat God bless you let's honor them as they go hallelujah now just two quick announcements and we're done next week we're going to be fasting please take note media let our people know 
we are going to be fasting. You can break for children. Children who fast too. Children can break maybe from 12 or 1. Uh, but for adults, because many of you will be here in the auditorium already, so um, give or take maybe let's, let's say 3 o'clock. All those who are workers and leaders, you can break maybe 4 or 5 or so. Let's say 4. Or let's, let's just leave everything to 3 so that we can have people who focus on what we are teaching and not be distracted by hunger. But a moment of fasting is not when you sleep and wake up by three. You didn't fast. Are we together? When you fast, you take out time to study, listen to teachings, listen to this teaching again, and give somebody, use it to pray. Especially that song that I just sang, pray with it, let it sink into your spirit. So we're fasting and... Um, God is going to be opening us up. We're starting a series, and it's going to be a very powerful series. God is going to be teaching us. You will become like a mighty oak tree in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Um, let me just honor two very quick announcements. The welfare and hospitality department is open for new members. All interested persons should wait behind at the PR stand. So you want to become part of our welfare and hospitality department here's your chance to serve in the house of god the pr desk is just after the main auditorium outside there and um, there will be a group of people to receive you applications close on sunday the 23rd of october so you have between now till that time to think about it and then as you decide may god grant you the grace in the mighty and matchless name of jesus christ hallelujah have you been blessed tonight May the Lord honor you. Please make sure you extend these teachings to many people. It's on Koinonia Global, our YouTube page. Listen to it again. And then do well to extend it to as many. And when you are coming next week, please do not come alone. This is not just about church membership. This is getting people who need to hear the word of the Lord, whose spirits need to be filed and built and trained in the matter of righteousness. Hallelujah. Make sure you do not leave someone behind who needs to be here to be imparted, to be touched, to access wisdom. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely. we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you next week. Yeah.